If there's anything we need, we need revival, don't we, church? We need a return to first love. That's all revival is, is God first. You know, I appreciate we're in election year and they talk about make America great. You make America great again by putting God first. It's not that complicated. He, he commands our devotion. You read your Bible and he's a jealous God. And he, and he doesn't want you to have anything in front of him. And we are the recipients of his blessings when we do that. And so our church, uh, we got our Bible conference starting next uh, Friday night, 6 o'clock. And then Saturday morning at 9.30. And then Saturday night at 6 o'clock, and then the Lord's Day on 9.30 for Sunday School and Worship Hour at 10.30. So there's four good services, just a, just a continual shot in the arm, encouragement, try to help you. Uh, these preachers, I talked to them this week about coming, and they said, is there anything you need me to deal with? I said, the Bible. Just open the Bible and tell us what God wants us to have, and that's all it's about. God knows what we need, and uh, so I'm excited about it. I appreciate the work day yesterday and all the folks that were able to help us and uh, got a lot of things done. It's a blessing to have our guest this morning for the first time. The, the, she can handle the attention this morning, amen. Little Shiloh, uh, what a blessing. Mom and Dad having their little girl here just about a week old, isn't she? A week old. That's starting off right, isn't it? I told her this morning, I told Shiloh, I said, I'm going to preach to you today. <laughs> Amen. But anyhow, it's sweet. It's a blessing. And we thank God for blessing mom and baby. And, and uh, you pray for them. God continue to help them. To be out in a cold day like this, that's a blessing to the Lord. I know he'll bless them for it. Uh, food will be announced. Uh, we're going to have food next Saturday morning and then on Sunday morning. And so we appreciate our ladies that can help us. Uh, dessert and drinks on Saturday morning. All the others should be taken care of. And then the Lord's Day. We'll have uh, side dishes and drinks and uh, dessert. So we look forward to a good weekend. The weather's supposed to be in the 60s. Is that not for the glory of God right there? Ah, there was things, somebody said, Brother Brown was teaching me something. I'm allergic to cold weather. Amen. I don't like it one bit. But anyhow, God's been so good to us. We have some flyers. Uh, Miss Jess got some good looking flyers here in the foyer. If you'd rather have an electronic flyer, well, we can do that. We can send one to your phone, and you can use that to connect people, and it has all the information of it. You'll see Miss Jess. She'll get one to you. I can even try, but uh, I don't have everybody's information on there, so just let's, let's try to get some folks to come. Let's, but most of all, let's us be here, our church. Amen? I look forward to guests coming, and there are some folks that are talking about coming. But I want our people to get some encouragement, get some help, and to get stirred this next coming week. It goes by so fast. It's hard to believe we're nearly at just two-thirds through the month of January. Just 2024 is just... Whew. So, ushers, if you'll come, please. We thank God for how he meets the needs of our church. And we appreciate you uh, giving to the Lord. And we pray the Lord will help us to be good stewards in 2024. And 24. Brother Doug, please ask God's blessing upon the offering, please. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for this privilege and opportunity to give this morning together in your house. Lord, we thank you for the Sunday school hour this morning. Now we pray for Brother Sam as he prepares to preach your word today. Again, I pray for open minds and open hearts today, Lord, that they might receive your word. Hide it in the Thank you.
Please turn with me to page 528, page 528. We'll sing all three verses of Do You Really Want Revival? song asks the question of the hour, do you really want revival? Boy, it'd be a blessing to see God's people hunger and thirst after righteousness. Wouldn't that be a blessing? It'd be a blessing to see God's folks have a hunger for God. Ah, I tell you, the Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. The Bible has a way of just creating an appetite in our heart. Uh, the Gospel of John talks about Jesus was preaching the great sermon in chapter 3. He said, The wind bloweth where it listeneth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. Something about that heavenly breeze that shows up, convicts all lost sinners of their need to come to Christ, draws them to Christ, and then at the same time, in the same service, he stirs in the heart of God's people a desire to draw nigh to God, a desire to love God, a desire to, to be zealous about the things of God. You know, when you start thinking about our zeal, oh, Jesus preached about the zeal of thine house hath eaten you up. People add up with the house of God. Be a blessing to see God's people have a hunger for old-time religion. Preached a little bit about it last week. I'd rather be an old-time Christian, Lord, than anything I know. And Boy, the, in Jeremiah chapter 6 talks about asking for the old paths. Old-time religion hungers for God to meet with His people and to stir them and to convict them. The Bible talks about it over in the book of, uh, of Peter. It talks about judgment must first begin at the house of God. God deals with His people. Revival is not something that's worked up. It's something that's prayed down. And, and in the book of uh, Psalms, chapter number 85, it says just one verse. It's just a jumping stone to get into some thoughts that I'd like to address this morning. It says in Psalm 85, in verse number 6, 
Wilt thou not revive us again? Can God do it? Can God do it? That's the question. Will you do it? We, we need God to manifest himself. People today, we're living in a culture today where uh, the natural man says, humanly speaking, it looks impossible. We see not as much of it or haven't seen it in so long. We're not expecting it. We're living in a culture today where a lot of people don't even have revivals. The sad part about it, even sometimes God's people have a meeting and God's people don't show up. That's not a good thing. I understand sometimes there's legitimate reasons why they can't. But the greatest need in 2024 in Rice's Valley Baptist Church in Northport, Alabama, in the United States of America, in the world today, would be a spiritual help from the right source, from the Lord. Folks, I'm here to tell you, God can help us today. God's not, His arm's not short that He can't save. God still can uh, do a work in the local church. I'd love to see America repent and turn to God. I worry about America. Well, it'd be a blessing to see uh, the greatest need uh, of, of revival, of first love, where people, the great commandment is, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. The whole goal of having a Bible conference is to try to get folks to look to God first. Love God. Obey the first and great commandment. Wouldn't that be a blessing? I don't know your heart, but I know how difficult it is in 2024 because the Bible says in Matthew chapter 24, where iniquity abound, the love of many is waxed cold. Oh, it's cold out there, folks. Sometimes it's cold in here. I'm not... Happy about that. I don't get any pleasure in saying that. It'd be a blessing to see folks have a restoration uh, of the joy of the Lord. They're, they're just glad they're saved. You ask them, how you doing? <laughs> saved. <laughs> Going to heaven. Say, why? Because of what Jesus did on the cross. That should be, if that's the first thing out of your mouth, boy, people are going to say, well, you don't hear that every day. You should. But that should be... That's why we need revival, a restoration of being joyful. And because he says, Wilt thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee? Be a blessing. See God's people uh, get their joy back about salvation. Oh, I know there's a lot of things to be happy about. It'd be a blessing to see folks uh, stirred in regards to the Bible. A, a renewal of love for the Word of God. Brother Brian teaching about the Word of God in Sunday school just th thrills my heart. Love people to be excited about what God loves. God loves His Word. Oh, this blessed old book is the means by which God uses to speak to our hearts. There's so many things that take place. We have good singing, have good fellowship. Hopefully we'll have a good crowd. I mean, God talks about it in the book of Luke. He talks about going into the highways and hedges and compelling folks to come in that my house would be full. Nothing would thrill their pastor to see everybody of Rice's Valley here on Friday night if they're able. Oh, I'd get such a blessing out of that. I appreciate folks visiting, appreciate pastors coming, but I sure would rather see our folks here more than anything else. Amen. That would bless my heart, bless God's heart. You think about the need for the hour. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 hasn't changed. It says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. God loves to forgive. He'd rather pardon than punish. Amen. Some people bring the judgment of God upon them because they cease to take care of their sin. Because you're saved doesn't mean you're not, you don't have sin. We constantly have to keep short accounts with God like old brother Earl Hughes used to preach and confess our sin and ask God to forgive us on a daily basis. You start thinking about the needs of the hour this morning, folks. I mean, we could talk about it all day long. But we're living in a, in a spiritual drought in Second Chronicles chapter 7. Look there with me, please, if you would. Got so many things I'd like to say, and you pray for me that I'd be able to stay focused on the need of the hour. The need of the hour is we really need revival. In Second Chronicles chapter 7, and as we looked at verse 14, everybody's familiar with verse number 14, but 
Verse 13 says, If I shut up heaven and there be no rain, it would be a terrible thing if God ceased to open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. There shall be showers of blessings. This is the promise of love. There shall be seasons refreshing. That's revival. Sent from the Savior of love. Showers of blessings. Showers of blessings we need. God said, you know, it's possible for me to shut up heaven where you're not getting the, the rain. Uh, God looks down and you wonder how he grieves. How grieves God because of maybe God's people don't seem to realize how they need to look to the Lord. Or maybe they're not depending upon him. Maybe they're not trusting him. Maybe they're not even, you know, lost people obviously are not saved. Be a blessing to see folks get saved. You know, revival's about stirring the saints. That's the work of, of a revival is getting God's people fired up. I would love to see repentance and God, lost people coming to Christ and be saved. That would be just, oh, that would be cream on the cake for sure. But he says, if I shut up heaven and there be no rain, if I command the locusts to devour the land, you think about all that's going on today with the generation we live in. It's a spiritual drought. There's things going on in our country today that uh, we say, what's going on? Why is that happening? How come that mindset has taken place? And it's, it's amazing the problems that people have today in regards to their attitude. You know, when you think about the dryness and the drought and no rain and the heaven's brass and, and not open for, heaven's not open for business. Now that's not good. Heaven should be open for business for God's people. In other words, we ought to be praying. If God's people are not praying, if they're not seeking God's face, if they're not humbling themselves, God said, I can see you don't need me. You're not crying out to me. You're not humbling yourself. You're not turning from your wicked ways. I'm going to shut up heaven. You ever feel like heaven's brass and you can't hardly get through to heaven? Why is that? It's not by accident. Oh, I'm convinced when you look at the picture of the book of uh, Second Chronicles, this is a verse that should be familiar to old-time Christians, Bible readers, students of theology. Oh, but we're living in, in a day and time where people are more interested in social network than the Scriptures. Spend more time flipping their phone than they do flipping the Scriptures. Spend more time talking to people, and I'm not against talking to people, I'm not against you doing social network, I'm not against you pursuing what interests you, but it'd be a terrible thing if our time is so out of the banks where we have no time to talk to God or hear from God. Oh, you think about the description of the United States. Churches and, churches and preachers and pews, I tell you, they're, they're, they're dry. They're dry. Their mouth is, is cotton mouth for the lack of moisture about the things of God. Mm. We've seen our country change just in the past few years over post-COVID and how it, we could never believe how that would change the world, and it did. It's changed the mindset. It's changed the playing field, people's perception. Church attendance has gone down dramatically in many places. It's not by accident, folks. This is a pestilence. It's a sickness. It's an infirmity. It's devouring nations. It's depleting resources. And there's not enough money in the United States Capitol to fix the problem. Oh, our economy's in, not in good shape, really. They talk about politicians fixing it. Mm, we, we know better than that. We've seen politicians come and go, and we certainly desire our country to be blessed. We'd love to see good leadership. If it was all just a matter of Washington being right, Everything else would be right. No. You, you know better. God's more interested in the church house than he is the White House. God's more interested in his people than he is politicians. Now, I'm not against politicians. We need them. Our country's been blessed. We've got a great form of government. It'd be a blessing if it worked. <laughs> It'd be a blessing if it worked. I, I tell you, that's not my message. But God was describing the nation of Israel. They were... Heaven was shut up and there was no rain and I commanded locusts to devour the land, things that are devouring things. And we go, what is going on? This culture today that we live in is absolutely out of the banks. The culture we live in today is just incredible when you start thinking about how people think about 
global warming and, and uh, all that's involved with that. You say, are you worried about global warming? Well, <laughs> climate change, people talk about that. I'm convinced there's a climate change. It's cold out there right now. It's called winter. Amen? And I'm not making fun of the problems of the world. I don't know how to fix the problems of the world. I'm not a scientist, but I know one thing. There's a spiritual climate change that's happened. There's, lot, there's not the hunger for church, for Bible, for preaching. And that's why we have a Bible conference, because it intensifies. It gives you more. How many of you had an opportunity to take a week off in the, in the winter and said, praise God, I got a week off. And your boss comes in and says, you can only have one day. No, that's not enough. I need a week. In other words, it takes a little time to, to get help. I remember Brother Brown, one of our missionaries in the Philippines years ago, him and his family came back, and they were here in our church, and they said we could, we could have revival if we only had a little time. I never forgot that. In other words, we could have revival this morning. It would be a blessing if God's people had time to just humble themselves. The Spirit of God would move in here and convict us and draw us nigh to Him, and, and we would draw nigh to God. I preached about that last week, about the old-fashioned invitation, how it helps us show God that we're dependent upon Him. I... I I've been preaching now these last 40 years, and I'm, one of the things I learned as a young preacher, and I pray that I never forget it, it's important for me to preach like everything depends on me, like I do my best and give my best effort. But then I have to pray like I know everything depends on God. I know God. If without Him, it's all in vain. Without the Spirit of the Holy One come down, all our preaching is vain. It's all about self. And we need more than that. We need help. We really do, folks. These are perilous times. There's a spiritual drought, very dry conditions. The problem we're living in is described as the Laodicean age where they don't need nothing. That's what it says in Revelation chapter 3. They're in need of nothing. Well, that's not a good attitude to have. We need God. We need, we need His presence. Uh, we need His Word. Uh, we need worship. Uh, we need help in our homes. We need stewardship help. We need physical health. We need wisdom to raise young'uns. We need help regarding how to be a good employee in regards to how to be a good citizen. I was preaching uh, Danny's funeral here just a week or so ago. And one of the things I think about it when I, when I preach a funeral more and more is I get a little older. Uh, Danny was a good citizen. He loved Alabama, loved Gordo, loved Tuscaloosa, loved his... He, he worked in that factory over there for over 30 years. Good employee, good citizen. Amen. And how we thank God for people like that, but how we need good Christians, more, more so. How we need God's people to step up and be stirred and be soul conscious and to be Bible conscious and to be church conscious. One of the things that worries me as the pastor of the Rice's Valley Baptist Church these past 26 years, about to start 27, is we, we've lost some of our dear folks that love church, that love this church. And I'm praying for God to raise up some of you young'uns where you'd fall in love with Grandpa loved. And you'd, be, you'd take his place, our grandmother, dedicated to a local church because they knew that was where God enabled them to be the kind of people that made them good people and better mothers and better dads and better grandpas. Revival. You say, why is it such a big deal? You know, God talks about having revival in church, in this assembly. I, I was listening to something on the social network where they're talking about we're returning back to the home church. Everybody doesn't have to go to a building. They don't have to go to a special building. And I, I, I can't argue with early church history. They had church homes where they would meet. And, and that's where they got started off. They didn't have established buildings and things like that. But I say to you today, can you imagine the pastor saying, we're having revival next week and we're going to meet in Brother Ricky's house. Boy, that... Brother Ricky would say, okay, but can you imagine how difficult that would be going to someone's home or Brother Doug's or uh, Brother Donald's and, and say, well, where are we going to put everybody? Never mind the bathroom problems and just things that's just Sunday school and, and if the weather's not good and all well, people trading, walking stuff in. It, 
you see the, see the way God has it figured out? He gives us common sense. And how, Aren't you glad you have a place like Rice's Valley to come to today? Amen. It's a blessing. It's here for a blessing. To help. Oh, David said, I was glad when they said, let's go to the house of the Lord. Boy, you see the deal, folks. It's just amazing. Ah, oh, because of one thing, we need revival because of sin. You know, there's a lot of sin out there. There's sometimes even sin in our hearts that we need to get exposed where God says, get right. Draw nigh to God. Humble yourself. Turn from your wicked ways. He's talking to Israel, his people. But spiritually speaking, we understand we're all capable of getting defiled. You know, if you started putting out a petition, let's do a, let's do a survey. How many people think we should have revival next week? People say, well, we can't afford to have revival. I can't afford to. It's too much. It's aggravating. I, I've got to get home, and then I've got to get there, and then I'm tired when I come home. I, I just think we'll just put it off. And, you know, people have been putting it off for a long time where a lot of churches don't even have revival anymore. It's all, you're talking about five, $6,000 for a four-day meeting? Yeah, that's what it about costs to get people to come from Tennessee and Mississippi and the great state of Alabama and gospel groups come in. You say, how do you, well, you have to try to take care of these people. And people say, oh, we're not going to spend that kind of money. By the way, in 26 years at Rice's Valley, I've never had to ask my deacons, is it okay if we have a revival? I've said, we're going to have a revival. And they said, we need it. And they've never argued with me about the finances. God's people have provided that. And I thank our church for that. Amen. Amen. If we didn't have the money and we couldn't pay for the meeting, we probably wouldn't have it. I'm not saying we'll always have the money, but I'm just trying to say we're living in a time where it's just difficult. You know, a lot of work involved in having a meeting. Now, I'm not saying folks in Alabama aren't afraid of hard work. But spiritual work is harder than physical work. I'm here to tell you, some of you dear folks that work hard to make a living to pray for your family, I'm here to tell you sometimes it's easier to go down to the job house and work eight hours than it is to come and be at a revival three or four days. It's hard work to be here and get here, but I promise you the benefits are good. The help is good. The obstacles are great. But the benefits are good. Ah, oh. you start thinking about revival this morning. What is a revival? What is a revival? What is a re you think about it. It talks about, wilt thou not revive as again that thy people may rejoice in thee? Ah, oh, revival is about uh, our come back to life, a renewal of vigor, a zeal for the things that once were a very big deal, being saved, loving God, raising your family right. Uh, being a testimony in a lost world for Jesus. That's what revival's about. How we could use a little help there. How many people would say, I I've got all the God I need. I've got all the God I want. Mm. No. You get all the God you're going to get when you get saved. Holy Ghost resides in you. But the question is, does God have all of you? And that's what revival does. Revival, it, it, it messes with us. It deals with us. It convicts us. It's kind of like going to the dentist and everything seems good until he starts getting that little pronger pronger in there and he finds a little spot and he hits it. Oh! And sometimes there's areas in our lives where God deals with us and says, you need stirred. You need to get right. You need to humble yourself. Here's one of the deals. You need to be found faithful. God's depending upon us to carry out the Great Commission in the world. Say, are we the only ones? No, but we're responsible for Rice's Valley Baptist Church doing what we're supposed to do. I thank God for what we've been able to do this last year. But boy, it'd be a blessing to see folks a little more fired up. It'd be a blessing to see folks a little excited about the hymns. They, they pick up the hymn bill and they sing the songs. Wouldn't that be a blessing? That'd be a blessing. So that's not too much to ask. You'd be surprised. Some folks think, oh, they, they could tell you all the world songs and they could sing them and they could tell you every word. But what about the old-fashioned hymns? Oh, I tell you, you know, one of the reasons why we need revival, because God's people sometimes get backslidden. They do. They put things before God. They're not, I, get me started on reading the Bible. I mean, here we are, we're in the 21st, I think it's the 21st of January, 
Have you began your Bible reading program all over again? I hope you have. I want you to. I need you to. It helps you. You need the Bible, church. Oh, my goodness. You think about the needs this morning. All that's involved. Could we have revival? Could God help us? Could God turn Rice's Valley into a fired up group of people that are excited about God and want to win people to God and want to live for God and want to look for God to come? Is Jesus' imminent return exciting to you? It should be. If it's not, we need revival. We need revival. One of my most favorite portions of Scripture is found in the book of Ezekiel. Would you look there with me, please? I just, this portion of Scripture is so interesting because it describes the nation of Israel in a real clear way. They're dead, they're dry, they're in a valley of dry bones. God's speaking to them through a preacher. And if you've got Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 1, the Bible says, The hand of the Lord was upon me, and, and he carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. That's where you get that old spiritual, them bones, them bones, them dry bones. Boy, there's a lot of dry bones today. There's a lot of cracker juice preaching too. Would to God the preacher was always fired up and had zeal and wasn't dry. God help us. God forgive me when I'm dry. Don't want to be. I know I'm capable of being dry. And he says in verse 2, And he caused me, God caused me to pass by them, these dry bones, round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And the Bible says, And lo, they were very dry. We're living in a dry time, church. People are dry on God. They are. And he, God said unto me, the preacher, Son of man, he asked him a question. He says, Can these bones live? It's quite a question for God to ask. Is there any hope for these dry bones? Is there any hope for the dry bones, Rice's Valley Baptist Church? I'm not being, trying to be unkind, our church, but we're, we're, we need some help. Our pews can be dry. Pulpit can be dry. Choir. Well, I'd love to see a choir back up there. Wouldn't that be a blessing? I'd love to see the pews full. I'm glad you're here. Thankful for those that are faithful. But boy, it sure would be a blessing to see an increase. Folks hunger for God. He says, can these bones live? Old Ezekiel's vision of a valley of very dry bones is identified in verse 11 as the whole house of Israel. This is a future picture of what God does with the nation of Israel. And He resurrects the twelve tribes from the graveyards of the nations. He's already begun to bring them back. It's incredible. Uh, uh, they've been scattered since 70 A.D. until the fullness of time of the Gentiles, which is 606 B.C. to the rapture of the church. All this scripture comes back together again. The Bible says because of Israel's rejection of their Messiah, blindness in part happened to Israel until the fullness of time become in. And, and, and down the road, we're going to have a call to tribulation, seven years of tribulation. Now, the church is going to be raptured, and Almighty God's going to deal with His chosen people. You think, boy, they'd be excited. You think Israel would say, I can't wait. They're not even conscious of it right now. God has to raise up 144 um, Apostle Paul's preachers in the tribulation. 144 of them. Boy, and they're preaching the everlasting gospel, the God's gospel of judgment. And it's an amazing what happens in, in these portion of time. Uh, God prophesied through a preacher Ezekiel uh, that these bones can live even though it looks impossible. I'm here to tell you, sometimes we, we get through a meeting and we go, what did God do? And I don't know our hearts. I probably should have a testimonial at the end of the meeting, but then it'd go probably a while, maybe. Folks would say what they did. I remember when we had Brother Leak in back in years gone by, and I remember him coming back in 1995 at Bible Baptist Church in, uh, in, in Atala when I pastored there, and, and we had testimonies, and, and folks just said, when we started the meeting, I was so dry. And when we're done with the meeting, I feel so full. It was such a blessing. Sandy, do you remember that? It's been a while back, I understand. Long time, 30 years. My question this morning, can Rice's Valley live? By the way, we don't get revival. We're not going to live. We're going to go by like so many other churches where we're, we're not going to be there. 
You start thinking about the prophecy through a preacher. Here's what God said. He said, and I answered and said, O oh God, thou knowest, Lord, I, we're having a meeting because we want to have faith to believe that you can, even though it looks impossible. Amen. Oh. And again, verse 4, he said unto me, here's what you need to do. Prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. The preacher said, well, I've been preaching to this bunch for 40 years. And they just don't seem to be fired up about it. They seem to be just cracker juice. They seem to be just, you know. I mean, I'm telling you just how it looks sometimes. And now you're probably saying, well, if we had a better preacher, I get it. <laughs> you probably do better, I imagine. Mm, this is what you got for now. All I got to do is preach the word of the Lord. All, I, all God told Ezekiel to do to Israel, he says, prophesy unto them. Tell them that God can. Tell them that God can, can do the impossible. God can raise from the dead what looks impossible. God can save old sinners still in 2024. God can revive Rice's Valley. God can bless the broadcast and help others that are out there. He said, but you've got to prophesy to them. And that's just, you know what that is, dear church? You know what this is. That's the foolishness of preaching. God said, just preach to them. Now I know we're living in a culture today. They say, oh, we need to have a singing. And I'm not against good singing. we got good singing coming next weekend. They are a blessing. But it's not about singing. If all we had was a singing, I wouldn't be the pastor. Oh, I couldn't handle it. I, I, I love good singing. But I hate singing where all they do is talk and then sing and talk and sing. What you need is you need preaching. And good singing prepares the heart to receive preaching. Pleases God by the foolishness of preaching. And what Brother Sam's doing this morning is just trying to prime the well a little bit. Where when these preachers come Friday, we're going, yeah, that's what God said. If, if they'll prophesy on you, if, if, if they'll breathe, if they'll speak to us, our God has the means by using the foolishness of preaching to raise us up, stir us up. How many of you over the years have said how God used an old-time country preacher, an old-time uh, Bible preacher to use him to speak to our heart and, and restore first love and to fall in love with the Bible and to fall in love with the local church and to get a burden for their family and lost souls? God still does. It's old-time religion, church. Old-time religion. Oh, I believe even though this is a prophetic picture of the nation of Israel turning back to God, I believe all scriptures given by inspiration of God and is profitable. And, and I believe in 2024, God's still able to stir up the church and stir up the family and stir up dad and mom and the preacher. God, the preacher needs revival. Amen. Pray for me. God will stir me up. I need it. Ah, oh, the need of the hour in 2024 is the fresh visions of God's evaluation of the true condition of the Rices Valley Baptist Church. If God, if we were to die, or if God was to call the church home and we stood before the Lord at the judgment seat of Christ, what would He say? I imagine He could say, well, you, you had all the advantages, you had all the tools, you've been blessed with 88 years of Bible preaching, that's a great heritage, you got a good, you got the book, you got the Word of God, and you've got the truth, and you've got the Holy Spirit, and you know what it means to be saved, and you, and, and, and you, and you could have been fired up, you could have been zealous for me, but you just kind of just didn't see the importance of getting revival. Mm. He says, coming to church next Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, going to make that big of a difference? It could. It could. I promise you it won't hurt. I, I, I've been in the ministry now a long time and pastoring a long time and I know, I know there's a lot of folks out there that are hurting. I do. I know there's a lot of hearts out there that are struggling. A lot of folks struggling right between their ears. They're really with their anguish and, and just mental anguish and depression and all the rest. And I know sometimes people say, I, I just don't feel like going to church. I hear that. And, and when I hear who it's coming from, I say, I, I can see why you would say that. But I say this. I promise you, you'll feel better when you come to church than if you stay home. Because the Word of God always helps you. The Word of God always helps you. Would to God the preacher was able to really connect better. But I'm just here to tell you, the songs will help you. 
You say, well, I'm not doing well. I'm struggling. Yeah, but when some dear saint walks up to you and says, I'm so glad to see you. I, I've been praying for you and I love you. You just can't get that when you're sitting at the house. <laughs> it's good. See, you come to revival and you'll see folks come in and you'll have preachers coming in. And you say, wow, look at all these folks. We've had folks come to our church and carry their Bibles. And we've had folks that visit and don't carry Bibles to church. And they say, i never seen so many Bibles at church. <laughs> I can't imagine going to church and not having Bibles everywhere. Amen. Nowadays, what I should do is I said, everybody shine your phone at me and see how many people are here with their phones and they got their lights on. Turn the lights off. Nah, I ain't going that route. Do that at your concerts and your soccer games or your football games or whatever else. But church, I, I love the old Bible, the precious old Bible. Amen. That's what we need. That's what we need, the book. Ah, oh, church, can God... Can God raise these dead bones, these dry bones, this valley? You know, we're living in all kinds of valleys today. The valley of death. I've never seen so many funerals in all my life. I had a dear pastor talking to him yesterday on the phone and about coming. and He was talking about how some funerals he's had in his church and had a lot of, had a lot of suicides. Funerals. And they're very, very difficult. Very difficult. I'm not... It's not my message. I'm just saying that's a difficult valley when folks have lost all hope and feel like their only way out is to take their life. I, I, I pray you don't go that route. I pray no one goes that route. Choose life. Let God help you. Look to God. Revival will help you there, dear church. There's a valleys of sickness. Have you ever seen so many folks that are just hurting? All I'm trying to encourage you is, folks, if you're hurting and you're not well, don't tell everybody on Facebook. You know why? They don't care. They don't care. They don't want to hear you whine and moan on Facebook that you're sick. Now, if you're not feeling at your best and you come to prayer meeting and say, would you, would you pray for me? God will help me. That's the kind of request you need to have. Amen. Oh, this social network doesn't, doesn't cut it with this preacher. Not impressed with it at all. Every time you bump your head because you can't, don't know how to walk through a door and you tell everybody, it, it ain't what we want. I'm not, there's some people that are hypochondriacs. Everything is wrong that everybody else has got. No, that's not where you need to go. That's a valley of this culture today. Moaning and whining and belly aching. Come on. Getting on. Getting on, folks, a little bit. I'm just telling you. Folks, come on now. You're, if your mom was still here, she'd whoop your rear end. Amen. Say, come on, get on with life. Take it to the Lord. Cast your burdens on the Lord. Ask Him to help you with your health. Amen. Oh, I know bad health is not going away. It's a valley. Can God help us when we're not at our best? Discouragement. You ever seen a culture today where everybody's just kind of discouraged? Okay, I get that. I understand. I know your life's not what you'd like it to be. I know you need, you need help. But I'm here to tell you, Wait on the Lord, and, and He'll give you renewal of strength. He'll help you. Revival will help you in such a time as this. He will. He'll help you. Oh, dear church, tripped to an old-fashioned altar. I'll help you. Oh, we're living in a day and time where folks just are in darkness. Oh, you start talking about debt. This is the valley of debt. Boy, how we need some wisdom in 2024 to be able to be good stewards of what God gives us. Be a good dad with our finances, pay the bills and help our family, raise our young'uns, honor the Lord when we come to the Lord's house. Amen. All this debt. You can't borrow your way out of debt, by the way. Oh, everybody wants to look to Washington and say, Washington, they give us debt relief on our school bills. Well, that ain't right. All those folks that have been paying their bills for years, all of a sudden these freebies that don't want to work want government to pay them out of their school debt. It's not fair. Now, I know nothing's fair, but I'm just saying, what do you do when that happens? It's easy to get an attitude. It's a valley of just debt and divorce. Folks, sometimes folks' homes break and people say, well, what happened, mom and dad? Oh, I'm here to tell you, moms and dads are falling apart all over the place. The devil hates the home and God loves the home. He says, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church. And here's the thought, and he gave himself for the church. And he wants you, dear husbands, to give yourself to your wives and your children. Amen! You say, I get tired of it. I'm sorry. It's just the way God made it. 
God wants you men to man up. Amen. Good preaching right there. We need a revival in the home. Amen. 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 Oh, folks, the valley is very dry. When things are very dry, there's no evidence of life. Death abounds for sure. The valley of the shadow of death and all that's involved there. Romans chapter 3 says the wages of sin is still death. And the result of the curse, we have the whole creation degenerating in spiritual interest, especially in this culture we're in. There's not the spiritual interest there should be. Oh, dear church. Hunger for God, a thirst for God, a love for the Bible, a love for preaching, a love for worship. A, 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 to be honest, we need help, folks, in these last days. It is dry, and that's why we need revival. Need revival. Need to be in our place. We need to be in our place where we can look to God and say, God, breathe on me. Use that preacher to help me love God. And people say, well, I, that preacher's not a very good preacher. Well, it's the Word that's important, folks. It's the Word. God, help us. He speaks to us from His Word. Ah, oh, dear folks, can these bones live? That's what he said. Can they, God asked the, the preacher, can the bones live? I think some preachers sometimes say, I don't know if they want to. I don't know if some people want revival. Like Brother Logan said, do you really want revival? Could you handle revival? You need one. God knows we need one. One way of Rice's Valley showing their interest in what God says is to make an attempt to be here during the meeting. Amen. You say, why are you putting the pressure on us? Why are you emphasizing the importance of it? Because if you miss it, it doesn't happen again for another year. Twenty years we've been doing this, and, and sometimes it's bigger crowds than others. I'd sure love to see our folks come. I'd love to see God speak to you. I'd love to see the services help you. But when you miss, what can I say? Glad to see you on Sundays. I am. I, I'm not the kind of preacher who says, I... You don't come any other time. I don't care. I, I'm glad when I get you here, I'll use the Word of God to try to help you, but I'd sure love to see that interest. Amen. Should I not be that way? Wouldn't it be a terrible thing if your pastor says, I'll come if you want. If you don't make it, I don't care. What an attitude that would be. Why even have a meeting? Why go to all the effort? I want you here. I need you to come. I want God to help you. Uh, through the breathing of the Word of God on you, God can stir you. God might raise you up, put, a, put something in you. Only God can put in you. Maybe God will put a call on some of the young men of our church to have a burden to serve God in the ministry. Boy, wouldn't that be all right? Say, can God do that? Did it for me. Amen. 43 years ago, God called this old sinner, an Irishman just over here from America, from Ireland, and God's helped me, enabled me, helped me to be around people that want revival, and I still want it. Amen, you young ladies. Oh, I'd love to see God stir you up and give you a burden for the things of God to be the kind of ladies God knows we need in our culture today. Amen. Oh, revival. Big deal. Old school, it's forgotten. This new school nowadays, this contemporary business, they're not looking for revival, they're looking for a concert. I'm here to tell you, if that's what rings your bell, I can't help you. I'm not going to say it's wrong for you to go and listen to somebody that you like to hear sing. I'm not saying that's wrong. But church is not about that. Church is about God. Church is about worship. Church is about getting right. Church is about getting fired up. Church is about getting a burden and a vision like we've been preaching about the past few weeks. God helping us be that generation that passes the baton of old time religion on to the next generation. Get that at revival. Amen, church. Moving right along here. God help us. I like what he said in verse number four. Again, he said unto me, prophesy unto them. If they don't get it the first time, go again. We've got two preachers tonight. And I, I, I'm not making excuses and I'm not alibying people that can't handle maybe a two to three hour service. But if you can only get one of them, get one of them. Amen. If your health's not good, come and get one. Come and get the second one. Just come and get some help. Amen. Say, I can't sit through that. 
Okay. Okay. Tell God that. Amen. Judy's never conflict. But come. Ah, oh, folks. Tell them again. Uh, can these bones live? Yes. The potential at Rice's Valley with young people getting a burden, getting a desire. I pray for God to raise up a youth pastor. We need somebody to draw all these kids together and get these young families together and stir them up about serving God and the next generation at the Rice's Valley Baptist Church. Amen. Is it on your prayer list? It ought to be. Amen. How we need help there and how these young people need help. I, I've given the best years of my life and I need someone raised up that can help us there. Amen. I want that for you. I'm not satisfied. We need more help. Amen. God's gave us some great young pastors in the past and I'm looking for God to do it again. Oh, a revival. The revelation how God can help revive the, the, the valley of dry bones. You know what it's going to require? It's going to require some faith. God wants to speak to us. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. That Bible, when it's preached and sung and prayed, it, it, it can do miraculous things in the heart of a believer. It can do miraculous things in the heart of a lost person that needs to be saved. Amen! I'd love to see that. We never know our young people. We never know our kids what age they are when they come to the age of accountability and need to make a profession, need to call upon the Lord, need to come to Christ. Oh, we have to continue to preach that they'll do that. Amen. Thank God for mom and dad and grandma and grandpa, but everyone's accountable when they reach that age to make a profession of faith and believe what the Bible says. I'll get them to heaven. Are you saved today? Have you been saved? If you died today, where would you go? Heaven or hell? God takes no pleasure in anybody going to hell. He's not willing that any should perish. If you've never heard the Bible that Jesus loves you and Christ died for you and He wants to save you, He died on the cross for your sins. He went to hell, took your place. He rose from the grave the third day and He wants you to accept Him. He wants you to trust Him. He wants you to know He's the only way you can go to heaven is by putting your faith in what He did on the cross. Have you ever done that? Are you saved today? Does your life show that you're saved? Are you stirred about being saved? If not, you need to be. Need to be. Oh, Ezekiel. He's providentially placed by God in the valley of dry bones and he's told to preach. I love what the Bible says. Jesus said it in Matthew chapter 4. I'm going to get it. Matthew 4, ver 4. Here's what, he, here's what Jesus said. Please bear with me. Matthew 4, verse 4 says all scriptures give him. That's not what it is. He talks about, he says, he answered and said, talking to the devil, he said, it's written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. His book is God breathed. It's a holy book. It'll help you. It'll stir you. It'll give you a purpose. It'll help you have a life that's worth living, the word of God. Oh, that's why we emphasize preaching, folks. Emphasize preaching. Oh, I tell you. The preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. If you reject it, which you have a free will, you can reject it. You don't have to trust it. You don't have to accept it. But one second after you're dead, you'll believe it, but it'll be too late. You need to come to Christ while you have health and the ability to choose ye this day. You need to trust Christ today. Be saved today. Ah, oh, folks, obedience is a prerequisite for revival. You've got to obey God. You've got to obey what He says. Be ye doers of the word. My people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked way and seek my face. Uh, God will operate. God will manifest himself. We need that heavenly breeze. Oh, folks, God loves to breathe. You ever, you ever been to service and you just felt that breeze of God just stir you a little bit? God stirs your heart and like the hairs in your neck stand up and you know God's speaking to you. How we need that. How we need that. Can God still do that? Yes. Yes. Uh, we need a noise from heaven. Uh, that's why we preach the word. That's why when Brother Sam comes to the pulpit, he tells you what the Bible says, by the help of God. And I, I pray that God will help our next coming meeting, that it will help us. Can these bones live? God can restore life to the Laodicean church in 2024. God can. He can. He do it in the future with Israel, and they're in a mess. They don't even know God. They're in a war and it's a mess, but God's going to stir them up through preachers preaching. God can still bless old-time religion. 
You say, well, this isn't the way the future is. Some people don't seem to think that is, and they choose another direction. I reject the direction they take because it's unbiblical. It's, un it's unproven. The fruit's in the pudding. By their fruits you shall know them. Oh, they may look like they're doing well, but uh, the jury's still out. Judgment seat of Christ hasn't happened. If it's, not, if it's contrary to this book, it's not right. If it's going by the book, amen. Go by the book. Go by the book. Folks, can God still use an old-time King James Bible preacher? You know he can. You know he can. And can God still save old sinners? Ah, folks, God wants to. Can God raise up the dry bones Baptist church? He did it with Israel. He will do it with Israel in the future. He can do it with us. May God revive us. May God stir us. May God help us. I, I am so thankful for this meeting coming up next week. It is a great opportunity for God to help every individual in our church. Those watching by means of broadcast, uh, you just turn that phone off whenever this broadcast comes on next week and you let God, God your undivided attention and, and, and respond to the Word of God. Get a blessing from the good singing. Draw an eye to God. Come to church if you can. But you that are here, thank you for being here. I hope and pray God stirs you to be here. Some of you have missed a lot of our meetings. Some of you just haven't. Some folks don't even show up until the meeting's over on Sunday and go, what's the deal? That's not what we want. That's unacceptable from your pastor. Be here. Get some help. Encouragement. Get stirred. Father, I pray you'd bless us now as we, we just tried to deal with some principles on revival.